When it comes to the preservation of the Native American culture, you'll find no better example than Crazy Horse, a ferocious leader that was a part of many skirmishes between the natives and the invading US settlers. He was born sometime between 1840 and 1845 to the Lakota division of the Sioux tribe. There are some who say that this pronunciation is wrong and that it is pronounced Sioux, though some argue that Sioux was the way the US settlers would pronounce it and that they would continue to use it knowing full well it offended the natives. Anyway, Crazy Horse's father was also known as Crazy Horse, while his mother was known as Rattling Blanket Woman. She would give him the nickname Curly on the account that he had curly hair. Unfortunately though, his mother would die when he was very young. Crazy Horse would mature quickly as the result of the loss of his mother, and his father was so impressed with him that he would give him his own name. As a young boy though, Crazy Horse stood out because of his fair skin, giving him an appearance that was noticeably different from the other boys of his age. Some say that it was these physical differences that would shape his mindset and personality, for even amongst his own people, he would be made something of a loner. The people of Lakota would possess the largest domain of land that ran from the Missouri River all the way to the Bighorn Mountains in the west. It made for quite an attractive spot for the invading white settlers, but by the point of 1840, the Lakota still hadn't had any bother from them. In fact, the Lakota were actually at the pinnacle of their power. A decade later though, in 1850, life for the Lakota would begin to change dramatically. The invaders who were in search of gold and a new life would begin to compete with the natives for resources, thus creating tension. Military forts were even constructed on the land and would serve to accommodate even more settlers to increase their own numbers. It wasn't until 1854 did these tensions come to a climax and would forever be known as the Grattan Massacre. It all started when a group of settlers led by Lieutenant John Grattan entered a native Sioux camp to take a native prisoner who had killed one of their cows. The chief known as Conquering Bear refused to give in to their demands and thus, a skirmish ensued. One white soldier shot and killed Conquering Bear, and so the camp's warriors retaliated and killed Grattan, as well as the 13 men he had brought with him. It was this event that many considered to be the conflict that kicked off the First Sioux War between the United States and the Lakota. For the still young Crazy Horse, it would be the beginning of a long road of distrust towards the white settlers. As the conflicts escalated between the Lakota and the US, Crazy Horse would find himself in the center of many battles. One that sticks out the most is when Crazy Horse led an attack on Captain William J. Fetterman and his brigade of 80 men. It would be known as the Fetterman Massacre and proved to be a huge embarrassment for the US who were overrun by the native force of over a thousand men. In 1868, a peace treaty was signed which guaranteed the Lakota important parts of land including the Black Hills Territory, which was considered a highly sought after bit of land. But despite this treaty, Crazy Horse still continued his fight. Crazy Horse possessed something of a mystical ability to avoid injury or death on the battlefield. He would develop a reputation of being relentless with his white nemesis, showing them no mercy during the brutalities. The people of Lakota would continue to change in the wake of the settlers who arrived. The only thing Crazy Horse wanted was for life to return to as it once was when he was a child, but the hope of that happening was dwindling fast. When gold was discovered in the Black Hills, an area that was legally possessed by the natives, the US government encouraged explorers to enter the territory and ordered the Lakota into reservations. Crazy Horse and the now chief, Sitting Bull, refused. On June 17, 1876, Crazy Horse led a force of over 1200 Oglala and Cheyenne warriors against General George Crook and his brigade, successfully turning back the soldiers as they attempted to advance towards Sitting Bull's base on the Little Bighorn River. A week later, Crazy Horse and Sitting Bull teamed up to destroy Lieutenant Colonel George Armstrong Custer and his esteemed 7th Cavalry at the Battle of Little Bighorn. It is considered to be one of the greatest victories that the Native American settlers scored over the US troops. But following the defeat of Custer, the US were out for blood and struck back against the Lakota with fury. Sitting Bull actually fled with his followers towards Canada 
and wanted no part of the angered American retaliation. But Crazy Horse refused to back down, regardless of what the US forces came at him with. By the winter of 1877, food supplies began to deplete, and Crazy Horse's followers, who were losing faith in him, decided to abandon him. It would take a couple more months, but by May 6, 1877, Crazy Horse rode into Fort Robinson in Nebraska and surrendered. He would be bound to the reservation, as the US forces took to the Black Hills in search of gold. But Crazy Horse would defy the orders to remain on the reservation in order to put his sick wife into the care of his parents. He would be arrested for the crime of leaving the reservation and was subsequently returned to Fort Robinson. However, it's said that a struggle broke loose with the officers there, and whether accidental or not, Crazy Horse took a bayonet wound to the kidneys. He died as a result of the wound, though in his dying moments, he refused to lay in a settler's beds and chose to die on the floor instead. His body was eventually reclaimed by his elderly parents, who had gone to bury the body at an undisclosed location. His final resting place remains unknown. There are quite a few colourful tales from the life of Crazy Horse, one in particular where he tried to date the love of his life, a woman named Black Buffalo Woman. However, she was married to another man named No Water, conveniently named on the account that he was said to always be drunk. During this love triangle, Crazy Horse was able to convince Black Buffalo Woman to run away with him, but No Water was quick to find out and went after the pair of them with a pistol in hand. When he found the two together in a teepee, he called out Crazy Horse's name, to which Crazy Horse responded. No Water shoved the pistol into the teepee, intending to shoot him, but little did he know, Touch the Clouds, a cousin of Crazy Horse, was also in the teepee, and knocked the pistol upwards when it was fired. This caused the bullet to catch Crazy Horse in the jaw, scarring him for life. Crazy Horse's men chased No Water back to his own camp, but eventually, the matter was resolved with Crazy Horse receiving compensation for the shooting. There's also the case of Crazy Horse's visions. After witnessing the shooting of Chief, Conquering Bear, moments prior to the Grattan Massacre, Crazy Horse was said to begin getting trance visions. He would embark on a visions quest, a sort of rite of passage engaged upon the Native American culture where he aimed to seek guidance. In his first vision, he observed a warrior on a horse riding out of a lake, whereby the horse seemed to float and dance. The warrior wore simple clothing, no face paint, and had his hair worn long with a single feather and a small brown stone behind the ear. Bullets and arrows flowed past him as he charged forth, but never once was the warrior hit. A thunderstorm erupted over the warrior, and his own people would grab hold of his arms, trying to hold him back. But the warrior broke their hold, and the lightning struck him, leaving him with a symbol on his cheek and white marks on his body. The warrior in the vision then told Crazy Horse that if he dressed modestly, remained untouched by his own tribesmen, and did not take any scalps or war trophies, then he would not be harmed in battle. Crazy Horse's father later interpreted the vision and said that the warrior was him from the future. As a result of this, Crazy Horse began using white war paint to mimic the marks of the warrior he'd seen in the vision. He proceeded to dress modestly, and as a result, was seemingly unharmed in battle, just as the visions predicted. However, there is said to be one moment where Crazy Horse did stop in the middle of battle to scalp two enemies he'd killed, only to be struck by an arrow. A warning from the universe, perhaps. The visions also detailed the scarring of the warrior's face, which may have been the scar Crazy Horse received from the gunshot of No Water after being found with his wife. The visions also mentioned that his own men would be holding him back before he was struck by lightning. In Crazy Horse's final moments, it's said that his own tribesmen were holding him back when the altercation with the officers at Fort Robinson took place. As I mentioned, Crazy Horse was stabbed here by an officer's bayonet, killing him dead. It's quite eerie that there seems to be some pretty similar symbolism here, behind the visions and what transpired in real life. Crazy Horse was said to be characterised by his aloof oddness, as well as his shyness, modesty and his desire to be by his lonesome. He was generous to the poor and elderly, and had a fondness for children. In Black Elk Speaks, 
a book about the medicine man Black Elk. He states that Crazy Horse was a queer man, and would go about the village without noticing people, or saying anything. In his own teepee, he would joke, and when he was on the warpath with a small party, he would joke to make his warriors feel good. But around the village, he hardly ever noticed anybody, except little children. All the Lakotas liked to dance and sing, but he never joined a dance, and they say nobody had ever heard him sing. But everybody liked him, and they would do anything he wanted, or go anywhere he said. As always guys, if you enjoyed this video, then don't forget to give it a thumbs up, and hit the subscribe button. Until the next time.